So you've decided to get AWS certified. You've done your research, you've chosen a certification, and now comes the hard part, studying. No one likes studying, and knowing where to start and what works for you can be one of the hardest parts of your learning journey. The AWS certification exams are tough, and they're supposed to be tough, even at the associate level. If you go into an exam unprepared, without a proper study plan, you may not do as well as you hope. And what makes it even harder is that everybody learns differently. There's no strategy that works for every single person every single time. Something that works for you might not work for someone else, and what works for someone else might not work for you. But what's important isn't to create a study plan or look at someone else's study plan and just follow it to a T every day. What's important is coming up with a strategy that works for you and your life and your learning style and applying it. So we've put together these five tips to help you do that. Our first tip for studying for your AWS certification exam is to join a community. This could be online, in person, uh, it doesn't matter. What you want to look for is people who are in your position or have been in your position. They're looking to study for and pass their AWS certification exams. Maybe they already have a couple, they're studying for another one. You're just looking for a like-minded group of people that can help you to stay on track and reach your goals. And there are a few big benefits to joining a community. One is the support. If you're stuck on a concept, you feel like you're not getting it or you're not making the progress that you think you should, you can go to those people and say, hey, I feel like I'm not getting it or I'm just not making progress, what should I do? And you'll have an answer. Another one is accountability. When you tell people about your goals, you're more likely to meet them. It's easy to set a goal by yourself and just brush it off and keep putting it off and procrastinate and never reach it. When you tell people, you have people to hold you accountable, and that's really valuable when you're learning. Your community can be online or in person. It doesn't matter, as long as you have that network for support and accountability. We have an active user community on linuxacademy.com. We also have a public Slack channel, so you can get started right away with those. If you prefer something in person, you like being around people, we recommend looking on meetups.com and finding a group near you. Or if you can't find one, feel free to start one yourself. Our second tip for studying for an AWS certification exam is to follow blogs. And no, we're not just talking about the Linux Academy and Cloud Assessments blogs. You gotta read a variety of different writers, different topics, uh, different technologies even, to really immerse yourself in the technology that you wanna learn. And that's really key. You want to immerse yourself. We've said this a lot before, but the AWS certification exams are not just about memorizing answers to a test. You need to know the services inside and out, their use cases, uh, different combinations of services, when you would use one over another and things like that. And that's the kind of information that you're going to get from reading different perspectives and opinions and people's voices on AWS. A good place to start, uh, this may seem obvious, but AWS, their news blog. That's where you'll hear about all the new services, the new features, updates to the platform and things like that. And you really want to stay on top of those things just to get a sense of how the platform changes, what they have in mind when they're designing AWS. Another great example is the AWS Startups blog. This is another official Amazon blog that they recently just moved over from Medium, and this will give you real-world scenarios, examples of how companies are using AWS to solve their business needs. And those are just two examples. There are a million blogs out there. You don't have to only read official AWS material. In fact, we recommend that you don't. We recommend that you get a variety of different perspectives. Maybe look for blogs written by actual solutions architects. Read blogs that are written by developers who are using AWS in interesting ways. And you can even start your own blog as you're learning. You don't have to be an expert. One of the best ways to learn is by teaching other people and sharing your knowledge. So as you're learning, 
it's often helpful to write about your learning as it's happening in real time. That way you can go back to it after you meet certain milestones and see how far you've come. Our third tip for studying for your AWS certification exam is to set aside a specific time to study. Now this may seem obvious, but it helps you get into a routine. And I'll give you an example. For me personally, my routine is to set aside about an hour, hour and a half each morning. This is before I start work, it's before I do anything else, I just set aside some time to read blogs, watch videos, uh, sometimes write a little bit of code, and just immerse myself in the AWS ecosystem and learn as much about it as I can. And here's why that works for me. When I get home from work, sometimes I'm tired, maybe I had a bad day and I don't feel like studying, I have to cook dinner, I have all these distractions that are keeping me away from it. So what I like to do is study first thing in the morning. It's before I have a chance to get distracted and that's what works for me. However, your schedule might be different and that's okay. Like I was saying in the beginning, you don't have to set a specific plan and stick to it letter for letter. You can find something that works for your life and your schedule. For example, maybe you like to go to the gym in the morning and that's already part of your routine. So don't try and wake up an extra hour earlier to study if that's not what you want to do. Your study time doesn't have to be in the morning and it doesn't even have to be every day. But what's important is that you set aside a specific time on specific days and commit to studying during those times. Our fourth study tip is to build something, build a project, it can be anything. And if you've watched our YouTube channel before, if you've read our blog, you've probably heard us talk about this quite a bit. Everyone has their reasons for wanting to get certified. One person might want a promotion at work. Another person might want a whole new career in the technology industry. Another person might just enjoy the challenge of working with new services and platforms. But what those people all have in common is that they love technology and understanding how things work and creating things. Think about this. Once you get that AWS certification, sure, there's a promotion maybe or a new job, but what are you going to really do with that knowledge? You're going to apply it, building real systems, real services, real platforms. So why not start now? Why not get that experience and increase your chances so you can get started working with AWS even sooner? And here's another thing that you've probably heard us say before. People learn best by doing things. Until you really test your skills in an actual live environment, using the services, going through the menus and clicking the buttons and creating real servers and infrastructure, you only have theoretical knowledge. And theoretical knowledge will only get you so far on your AWS certification exam. So if you wanna get started using AWS, building projects and getting your hands dirty with the platform, where do you start? Well, one place that we recommend is cloud assessments. That's one reason that we started cloud assessments. You can go through, take a challenge. It'll give you a real scenario in a real AWS environment and you can see what skills you already have, what you're good at, and also what you need to improve on. If you like something a little more open-ended, that's fine too. You can find a free open source software project. There are thousands of them out there, maybe millions. Download it and just try and set it up on AWS. What's important is that you get started using the platform, get used to the services, get used to the error messages because you'll see plenty of those. Whatever project you choose, the important thing is to just start getting that real world, hands-on AWS experience. You'll learn a lot more effectively and you'll have a much better chance at passing your exam. Our fifth and final study tip is to set two learning goals for yourself each day. This may seem a little odd or counterintuitive, but let me explain what I mean. So when you set your two goals, you're gonna to wanna to have a large learning goal and a small learning goal. The large one should be something significant, something that's really gonna help you learn and that you wanna aim for. So this might be something like uh, spending an hour watching videos and working on projects. You're also gonna to wanna to set a small learning goal. This might be something like 
read three blog posts. And these two goals should be significantly different in the amount of time and effort it takes to complete them. But they should also be realistic. You don't want your large goal to be too large and you don't want your small goal to be too small. So what's the point of having two goals? Well, it's kind of a silly trick, but it's one that I've found really effective for me. You want your large goal to be your real goal that you set out each day to accomplish. Your small goal isn't something that you have to do in addition to that, but it's something that you can fall back to if you don't meet your large one. This will help you with time management as well as keeping a good balance in your life. Let's say, for example, you plan on studying in the afternoon after work, but a friend texts you and says, hey, let's meet up for dinner tonight. Do you blow off your friend or do you blow off your studies? The point of having two goals in a situation like this is you can default back to your small goal. Let's say that you won't have time to study for an hour or two that night, but you can still make time to read a few blog posts and do some research. It won't take as long, but it'll still be meaningful progress towards your learning goals. And I think this is a really key point because yes, studying is hard work and it's meant to be hard work. The exams are hard, but it shouldn't consume your entire life. Your relationships with your family and friends, uh, your work, other things in your life shouldn't have to suffer just because you want to dedicate yourself to this learning goal. So what I've found is that setting a smaller goal that I can achieve if the first goal doesn't work out has been really helpful to me in times when I'm just having a bad day and I can't study as much as I'd like to or my time doesn't work out. It helps me keep a balance in my life, but it also keeps that momentum going. It's easier to study if you've studied for a few days before than to come from a total day off. No one likes studying but it's a necessary part of the journey to success. And believe me, I've been there, staring at documentation, looking at server configurations. It's no fun. But just remember, it's not impossible. People have passed the AWS certification exams. People are gonna keep passing them. And the way that they do that is they create effective study strategies that work for them. These tips that we've talked about don't all apply to you you might find that one of them works really well for your life and one of them just doesn't help you. And these are just suggestions. You might find something somewhere else that works really well for you, or you might try some of our tips and find that that just doesn't fit in with your learning style. And that's okay. What's important is that you create a strategy that works for you and your learning style. And this is an ongoing process. It's a process where you continually improve and change things until you find something that allows you to learn the most effective way possible. And when you're learning the most effective way possible, that's when you have the best chance at passing your AWS certification.